In this video we mentioned four gene therapies which are offered by integrated health systems. We didn't go into the details in the video. The therapies are 1. Telomerase induces telomerase to lengthen telomeres with a number of health benefits. 2. Folistatin a myostatin inhibitor that has been through safety and efficacy trials for muscular dystrophy and increases muscle mass. 3. Clotho protects against cardiovascular and chronic kidney disease and increases intelligence by upwards of 20% in mice within hours of being injected. And 4. PGC1-alpha increases the biogenesis of mitochondria making them more robust and plentiful, increasing energy stores without the detriment of oxidative stress and damage. And with that, let me start the interview. Who's the company? Why did you feel that you needed to set up BioViva? And do you see BioViva as a research company or it's a health company? Well, I think that any, so I will introduce it. So my company is called BioViva and we are looking for the genetic cure for uh, non-communicable diseases. And so that would be a vast array of um, aging associated diseases and uh, childhood diseases that are non-communicable, of course, and not infectious diseases. Um, we are targeting the hallmarks of aging, and uh, that is where we think that we'll get the biggest bang for the buck for most people in the population, and then we'll expand from there. We are a research and development company and a bioinformatics company. So we have a paper that will be released uh, soon. Uh, it's under review, and it is uh, work that we did at Rutgers University, and we extended the lifespan of uh, mice um, significantly with two different genes. And now we will start uh, preparing to advance the technology to a multiple gene delivery system for humans that will hopefully create um, homeostasis. So the goal of the company would be to create a human that stays in homeostasis that does not, that basically regenerates as fast as they degenerate, if not a little bit faster. Um, I think that's about it. That's a lot. <laughs> wow. That, that is, yes, I, I mean, and I did want to talk a little bit about the, the Rutgers uh, work. Um, but at the moment, uh, so kind of where you are right now, okay, so you have a partnership with integrated health systems. Is, is, is we, that work with a, we work with many uh, companies um, to do the biostatistics of their data. So Integrative Health Systems is one of those companies. That's a company who does medical tourism, uh, where patients may choose to, with a medical doctor, uh, participate in therapies that are not regulated technologies in the United States. We look at that data that we feel is the most important data uh, in the world uh, is how these technologies work in humans. Right. Okay. So do you have multiple companies that you work with in terms of the medical um, tourism or is, is you kind of integrated health systems the main one? Uh, and any company who does medical tourism can reach out to us and have us explore uh, their uh, data, their human data on how their therapies work. Okay, so are you only collecting the data? I, I mean, so in terms of the actual therapies, like, um, so I, I integrated health system has like four therapies that they use and one of them and some of them I believe you have taken. So yes. did, did they develop them or did you work with them to develop them and how did those therapies come about? Those therapies are therapies that their doctors are interested in looking at the performance of and we are of course interested in how those therapies perform in humans. So um, any company could actually come forward to integrative health systems and, and bring them a protocol to look at therapies, but those are therapies specific to their medical doctors. Okay. So those four therapies, uh, like so, so you have uh, like a telomeres, uh, myostatin inhibitor, clotho, and PGC one alpha. So those were, those are kind of offered by Integrated Health. So could someone do those through Integrated Health directly, or, or they they go through you, or you would have to contact them. We cannot. We don't uh, we, give gene therapies at BioViva, so people oh, uh, contact us about that all the time. Um, Integrative Health Systems is one of the companies that you know we can. 
Um, you, we can suggest that people email if they're interested. There are other companies as well, um, but you need to do your own due diligence. So, you know, we can't um, suggest that a person takes participates in a gene therapy. Okay. We're just a research and development and bioinformatics company. Okay, okay. Um, so you have taken some of these so can you tell us which ones you have taken and, and how how you kind of feel after that and what sure. kind of what kind of markers are you checking to see how you're doing Right. So I took in 2015 to launch BioViva. Um, this was something that we have a, a, a patent pending on. I took two gene therapies. Uh, that was a dual gene therapy that's telomerase and uh, folistatin. So uh, this is uh, two gene therapies that create a synergistic effect. Mm -hmm. um, my biomarkers that we tested were my blood, my telomere length, um, MRI images. Uh, we did as much as we could at the time. And then after that, we started uh, collecting data on my microbiome, uh, my genome, my epigenome. And um, more recently, I have participated in uh, Clotho and PGC1 alpha. So I've taken all four, four of the gene therapies. Wow. Okay. Um, are you so? Can I ask how long ago did you take the last two? Was that? Uh, that was the summer of 2020. Actually, taking it kind of a step back, why have you concentrated on gene therapies? I mean, there, there's many other ways of addressing uh, perhaps the hallmarks of aging. So why, why do you feel that gene therapies is the best way? Well, the, the reason that a person would look at gene therapy is they're, they're looking for a permanent cure. They're looking for uh, a therapeutic uh, that wouldn't have to be taken daily. Uh, something that works at the cellular level that doesn't have off target effects. For instance, small molecules uh, hurt your liver and your kidneys and have a myriad of potential off, off target effects. Gene therapy just upregulates the protein that's beneficial in the regenerative process in the case of these select genes. So um, that's the reason that the interest is there is to actually solve the problem and, and get humanity off to the next uh, big hurdles, which will be things like climate and energy and uh, outer space travel. Yes. Um... So are all of the therapies like one time you, you do them and th do you well, ever that, need to? Yeah. That's something that was vastly unknown and is still unknown. So of the five regulated gene therapies in the world, um, they are all considered a one-time treatment for a lifetime cure, but that's not necessarily true. So um, we don't know how long a gene therapy that um, is delivered as an episome. So we do not do, we do not look at um, in our research and development uh, with Rutgers, any integrating genes. We don't look at CRISPR technologies. We're not looking at any sort of modification to a human chromosome. We're merely looking at delivering a gene and having it create a drug factory out of your own cells, right? Creating re regulate, uh, regenerative proteins right there at the source. So in that case, um, some cells may lose those gene therapies sooner than others. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we were to transfect long uh, lasting cells, like a muscle cell that might be with you for 10 years, your gene therapy might be with you for that long. If we did something like, um, epithelial cells or something like that, it, it might have a, a much quicker turnover. So um, it's vastly unknown how long we think we, how long a long lasting gene therapy will last. So in severe combined, combined immune deficiency, they do gene therapy on the stem cells of the patients. And then they re they put those back into the patient's bone marrow. Will that last the lifetime of the patient? It's still vastly unknown, but that would be considered a more permanent gene therapy in sickle cell anemia. Now they also uh, harvest stem cells out of the bone marrow, replace them into patients and it's cured. Uh, sickle cell anemia. That's still in earlier trials, but it has uh, great evidence. And they're actually using CRISPR to do that. Um, CRISPR definitely being right now an ex vivo uh, gene therapy uh, type uh, therapeutic. So um, 
we don't know uh, how long a gene therapy will last with the human body. With the regenerative gene therapies, we hope for a very long time. Right. Recently, there were some. You, th there were six people, six people in Mexico, uh, who who went for gene therapy. Right. Uh, is this something you can talk about? You know, well, what I can talk about is that the article that came out about that was incorrect. Um, and then it spun off a bunch more incorrect articles. Um, that uh, the six patient uh, dementia study is funded uh, by Maximum Life Foundation. Uh, it is um, integrative health systems helped um, uh, doctors and patients meet for that study but BioViva is only looking at the bioinformatics data. We did not help people get to Mexico. <laughs> and I never said that the US FDA is a hindrance. As a matter of fact, I'm writing a, a thesis right now for my MBA on um, a new route for the, the FDA to consider. I, I of course believe in safe uh, drugs, but right now the route that we have to drug development is um, is not complete and it's not actually helping us save lives. So we need an expedited route for what I call best choice medicine. Right. So, so I don't have as much to say about the dementia study as that article uh, implied. I we only literally look at the data and I don't look at the data. Um, that's for biostatisticians to do and um, I, I really don't have much else to say. On the defense of Maximum Life Foundation and integrative health systems, I can tell you that um, the article was also incorrect. It is the most ethical thing that we can do is to help terminally ill patients get access to therapeutics. And I was very, very forlorn, forlorn by the typical um, uh, behavior uh, that something like that could be considered unethical, honestly. Um, these people didn't have to pay for treatment and it gives them an option that might actually help in the long run save 7 billion people. Um, I, I, anyway, yeah, I don't yeah. have outside of that a lot to say about that. It was really poor writing. It was a poor mm -hmm. story and um, it uh, was a misuse of, of everyone's time. Right. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.